Hello, I'm going to demonstrate Newton's second law of motion. Here we have Newton's second law stated. When an object of mass m is acted upon by a net force f, the acceleration will be given by the equation a is equal to f divided by m, or acceleration is equal to the force divided by the mass. Now to demonstrate that, I have here an air track and a car, and I'm going to apply a force with this spring to the car, but let me first turn on the air. So as the air comes out through these holes, it'll let this car slide on an essentially frictionless surface as the air supports the car. So I'm going to apply a force of what I'm going to call arbitrarily one unit of force. That'll be a certain stretch of the spring. I'm going to call this mass one unit of mass, and I'm going to measure the acceleration. And I'm going to call that acceleration, arbitrarily, one unit of acceleration. So on one unit of mass, with a force of one unit, we have determined that the acceleration is one unit in our arbitrary system of units. Next, what I'm going to do is take that same one unit of mass, and this time I'm going to apply a force of twice as much two units of force on one unit of mass, and now let's measure the acceleration. One unit, two units of force on one unit of mass, and we observe, if we did this carefully, that we would then get two units of acceleration. So with a force of two on a mass of one, we get an acceleration of two. Similarly, if I have the same one unit of mass, and this time I'm going to apply a force of three units, three times as much stretch in the spring, or three units of force, on that original one unit of mass, there's one unit of force, two units of force, three units of force. I have to move fast to keep up with that. And we find now that we get an acceleration of with three units of force on one unit of mass, we get an acceleration of three units of acceleration. Next, what I'd like to do is to demonstrate uh, what happens if we keep our original one unit of force and now increase the mass. Now I'm going to go down the column this way and uh, take the original one unit of force, only this time I'm going to apply it to two units of mass or twice as much mass. So now we have two units of mass. I'll couple these together here with a little spring. We have two units of mass and we'll take the original one unit of force and let's measure the acceleration. We observe the acceleration if we were to do this carefully to now be one half unit of acceleration. Similarly, if we were to take three units of mass, add one more car here, and now take three units of mass with our original a one unit of force, one unit of force on three units of mass, and the acceleration is even less. In fact, if we were to measure this carefully, we'd observe that the acceleration is now one-third of the original. So in this box here, we would put one-third for the uh, acceleration. Again, that's in arbitrary units. Now, it gets a little more uh, interesting when we take uh, two units of force on two units of mass. What would you expect to get there? Well, let's try it and see. We'll take uh, two units of mass 
two cars coupled together. And uh, we'll take now two units of force and we'll measure the acceleration. Now you've probably guessed what this would be. Let's try it and see. One unit of force, two units of force. And we find we're back to our original one unit of acceleration. So with two units of force on two units of mass, we get one unit of acceleration. And you would probably expect that if we had three units of force on three units of mass, we would also get one unit of acceleration. Let's try that experiment and see if that works out that way. We'll have three units of mass. We'll take three cars, couple them together. And we'll take a force of... Uh, Three units of force, one unit, two units, three units of force. Now on three units of mass, as soon as that last one settles down just a little bit. Three units of force on three units of mass. And we find that we get our original one unit of acceleration. So that checks out. Now, suppose we have three units of force on two units of mass. That may not be quite as obvious. Let's try the experiment and see. Let's take uh, two units of mass. And uh, two units of mass and three units of force. And let's see what goes in this block here. So I have three units of force. Now, one, two, three units of force on two units of mass. And if we were to measure that carefully, we would find that the acceleration turns out to be 1.5. Similarly, if we were to do the experiment here, we would find that the acceleration with two units of force on three units of mass would be two-thirds. So that fills in the table of data for the three units of force and three units of mass in different combinations. So we have nine possibilities. It turns out that we can write these numbers in just a little bit different form. For example, we can write the number 1.5 as 3 divided by 2. We can write the number 1 here as 1 divided by 1. And we can write 2 as 2 divided by 1. And we can write 3 here as 3 divided by 1. Similarly here, we have 1 half. We've already written it in fractional form. We can write this 1 here as 2 divided by 2. And the 1 here as 3 divided by 3. And now we see that we have a fraction for each of these. And can you see that that fits in with the equation? For example, the equation says acceleration is the force divided by the mass. Force divided by the mass. Let's take this one here. Force is 3 units. The mass is 2 units. We divide 3 by 2 and we get 1.5 which is what we measured the acceleration to be with a force of 3 on a mass of 2. So we see that the acceleration is equal to the ratio of the force to the mass. Newton's second law.